Okay, so today I'm going to talk about making a pattern that wraps around a cylindrical surface, like a tire tread, something along those lines. I had a friend of mine call me up and ask me for some advice. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a sketch. That sketch is going to be the actual cylinder that you need to create the pattern on and around. Now to constrain this, I'm going to pick that to there. And I want to just say point on curve. I want to pick this to this bottom plane. And I just want to say tangent. And then for diameter, we'll go ahead and say 200. Now that I have that in place, you can, and I'm just going to do this for the whole entire um, the diameter. Normally you would just draw a segment of it, maybe a sixth of it or an eighth of it or a tenth of it, however many you need to wrap around and then just uh, do a portion of it. But I want to do the whole thing to give you guys an idea of how powerful an X can be. Now that I have that, I'm just going to simply extrude. And I want to change this from solid to sheet. And you want to go the width of whatever it is you need, let's say 100 mils. Now that I have that in place, next thing I need to do is I need to actually unwrap. Let me change the color here so we can see this. I need to unwrap this curve as a reference. That reference is going to be the length of that curve so I can draw a pattern that fits along this cylinder. So for that I'm going to come in here, I'm going to measure simple length, I want to uh, I apologize, my bad, I want to go to curve, I want to unwrap first, I want to unwrap this curve, this is my reference, and this is the plane I want that curve to go down to. Now that I have that unwrapped now I'm going to go into analysis, simple length, and I could have done this on the arc. If you really want to, you can. You could have done it on the circle. It really wouldn't have mattered. It's just in my head I have a certain pattern that I like to use. Okay, now that I have that, what I want to do is I want to make sure that that stays here in the window. You'll see there's my length measurement. Now that I have my length measurement, next thing I need to do is I need to draw the pattern that I'm going to use that's going to go along this um, this unwrapped curve. So for that, I'm going to go in here, create my sketch, pick my plane, select OK, and for this, it's just going to be a couple of I'll just draw a little triangle. And I'm just going to do something relatively simple. Now to constrain this, I'm going to pick these two. I want to say equal length. That'll make sure that this is nicely balanced across whatever midplane. And then I'm going to do a dimension. This dimension is going to go from this endpoint to this endpoint. Now, the length of this needs to be a division of the total length of this line. So if I come in here and go into formula, my formula is going to be this P5 that you see here, divided by how many of these do you need to go around the entire barrel. So if I wanted 25 of these around that entire barrel, I'll put divided by 25, or I could say divided by 30, however many of these you need. Just to make it a little bit easier for visualization, I'm just going to say 20. Select OK, and close. Now that I have that value in there, I'm going to finish my sketch. Next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and create a pattern of the geometry. What's my pattern? It's a linear pattern. I'm going to take these two curves. Whoops. Let me deselect that. I just want these two curves. Now, what's my vector? And then how many of these do I need? Well, I have a count of 20. Remember, that was my actual count that I wanted to divide by. And my pitch distance is going to be a function. So I could do a, or I should say a formula. I want a formula of what? So this is my P6. That's that value. So I'm going to come in here and say P6. Remember, this is the, the, the length of the bottom of that triangle. Select OK. Now when I look at this, you'll notice that it runs the entire length of this, and it goes endpoint to endpoint. Now I could have created a formula for this. So I, uh, I could actually link it, and that way I can just come in here and just modify one little thing and modifies everything else, but I don't want to get too much into the expression editor for now. 
Now that I have that in place, next thing I need to do is I'm going to create another pattern. I want a pattern. And again, this is something you could wrap this around and to do the pattern on the cylinder, but I'm happy doing it here. I want to pattern this. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to deselect that curve. What's my vector? That's my vector. And what's my pitch? Okay, so if I come in here and just say 15 and say 10, and you'll just fit this. Get this to fit on your little surface. There you go. Select OK. And again, you'll figure out what this distance is, and you can tie formulas to each and, uh, and everything else. You also have the ability to do count and span, span and pinch. So if I wanted a specific amount in that span, my span distance is going to be from point A to point B. And what I know what my span is because that's that diameter or that distance that I extruded this out at. And I also have pitch and span. Maybe I have a specific pitch distance. I want these to be apart to run along that entire span. So I'll just say count and pitch for now. Select OK. Now that I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and hide. And the last thing I need to do, well, I shouldn't say last, but what next thing I need to do is I need to take this and do a wrap. So this time I'm going to change this from wrap. I'm going to say, or from unwrap to wrap. What are my curves? These are my curves. What's my face? This is my face. And what's my plane? So basically exactly what I picked before. Now when I wrap that, you'll notice that, there we are, as it wraps, it meets perfectly across the top. There's no joint, nothing disjointed, everything fits. So let me go ahead and hide this. Let me go ahead and hide. Set curve, pick all these, pick all these, just to clean this up a bit. Um, there we go. And good enough. Now that I have these hidden, next thing I want to do is I just want to take and go into surface. I'm going to go into law extension. And under my law extension, what are my curves? Well, I'm going to pick this chain of curves first. What's my face? This is my face. And what it's going to do is it's going to do this extension for me. So I want to angle. I want to make sure that my angle is going off in the right direction. And then I want to make sure my length, in this case, this length is going 7 in this way, and I have an asymmetric length of 20 going in the opposite direction. And now that I have that in place, I want to make sure that my method for my miter says sharp. If it's not sharp, then I may get these funky overlaps or it may round out on it, which I don't want to do. And select apply. And what you would do at this point is, and again, I, I'm just showing you, I'm doing everything all at once. Um, there's a wow factor to that, but in realistic terms, you would only do a segment or a portion of this. So you wouldn't uh, be taxing the system so heavily. Go like that. And you want to take and make sure that, as you can see, this is starting to pinch in down here. So in one case, it's tapering in one direction. The other case, is tapering in the other direction. So this came in to the correct orientation and select OK. Now, you would obviously finish this out, go all the way through, and then to get the inside surface, there's an easy way to do it. You can just do an offset. I'm going to reverse my offset to whatever depth you need. Select OK. And then at this point, let me go ahead and hide this, you can go ahead and trim everything up. 
So if I want to, I can do trim and extend. And again, you would do this for the whole entire corner there we go and apply and do the same thing here control shift K let me bring this back and then you can just do a uh, trim sheet or if you really wanted to you can do another trim and extend to get everything to trim oops So there you have your lovely little, what would be tread depth. So this is a really good, simple way to make your treads. If I came in here and changed this, uh, let's go to details. I made this 300, for instance. This is going to grow. And you'll see what ended up happening is, is that uh, because of the surface fell off of this edge, it lost its ability to trim, right? The surface doesn't. Um, come out far enough because I made it much bigger. The height of that triangle gets bigger. Let me just drag, drag that out a little bit. And there you have it. There's your tread. So you can make this bigger, you can make this smaller, so long as your slabs are big enough. And again, it's a question of linking parameters and doing things in a certain fashion. But the big, the big lesson here is, is how do you get a curve, unwrap it, make a pattern, wrap it, and then trim everything out.